kids. Uh, but the first thing you want to do, you want to show our respect to God. So uh, we're going to open up a prayer. So we're going to ask Mr. Mr. Smith. It's our office. We're going to ask him to open up a prayer. Precious Master, let us pray. Master, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to come before the throne of grace. Just to thank you. We thank you for Jesus who died that we might have life and have more abundance. And Master, I pray, apply the blood of Jesus over your people and his protection all around us. Master, we pray for peace. We pray for justice. We know it was said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So Master, we pray that justice is, is done in the mighty name of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus over your people and their head protection and protect us from any hurt, harm, or danger, Master. We pray for this situation. We pray for peace and the coming. We pray for the family of the love of this lost one. We pray for this city and all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, the first thing I want to say that uh, we're not out here, you know, to, uh, to we're not out here to, you know, to cause any commotion or the first thing before we even get started, uh, it would be an honor. You know, he can do something you know, we can just walk around here. This, this is what he got shot in the room in the back. And we just want to walk around here and just show our respect and we'll come back here and but your heart say a word and anybody else that would like to say a word, the floor, you know, the floor would be open. And, Make sure the real light is on. So. Now just imagine somebody dropping bombs in your house and shit. Would that not terrify you? Uh, 80% African American greatly concerned about the killing of a 107 year old man, Mr. Isidore, in his own bedroom on September the 7th. Uh, at this point, we do not believe that the real questions that should be asked and answered have been asked and answered by the police department and by all those uh, who are concerned. Uh, for a man at 107 years old to be killed. Not as some thug who's drunk and who's out running the street causing problems, but as a man who as I was told by his daughter, uh, Miss Roberta Foster, that the man had went to his bedroom to pray and to fast until October the 4th, which is one of his daughter's birthday. I don't believe that a man who was in his own bedroom praying and fasting should be killed by the police. If they had a camera inserted in his room, they were able to watch him from a distance. They were able to put tear gas into his house and wait until the tear gas took effect 
what was the rush to kill this man? And would this man have been killed if he was a Caucasian at 107 years old in his own bedroom? I don't believe it, no. When in fact the man was in his own bedroom, right? He didn't have nobody hostage in there. They said everybody was out. So what was the rush to kill the man? To shoot him several times. I don't understand that. And I think that the police department should not hide behind the special prosecutor. You have a responsibility to protect and serve and to be transparent. So we have some questions that need to be answered. What was the rush to kill this man? I would like to say this. Uh, to add on to what Brother Dehan said. Why are we asking? Why are we asking? We're asking this. We ran the Man actually shot this, this, uh, this uh, he's the one that was trying to However, we know that Chief Rebank was one who went in the house also. So he went in as the SWAT team. So if he went in and he was on the SWAT team and went in, he either made the decision to allow Mr. Ventures to, to shoot uh, to shoot him. So if he, if he did make the decision, he should be on administrative leave also. So we asking that Miss Mr. Rebanks be placed on administrative leave. If he's not placed on administrative leave, that's he has an opportunity to take the officers. He's still an authority, but he's a part of it. Is that just? We believe that the Justice Department should step in. The federal government should step in. We believe that there's the, 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 the Justice Department has to step in. So that's our, that's our position. Uh, we don't believe that, that this man was sitting in his home, in his own personal home, deserved death. No man, no one sitting in their own home deserved death. We expect the police department to protect us. Bring us to protect us, not kill us. And if Mrs. Rebanks, if we say the, the Pine Bluff Police Department need more training, well, this is the chief of police going in. If he need more training, why is he the chief? If he need more training, he should he is the one responsible for the training. So with that said, that's the only thing that we wanted to say. Uh, anybody's got anything else that you'd like to say? Anybody's got anything you'd like to say? So we don't, we don't, the, the thing is, we don't want this issue swept under the rug. We've seen it time and time again where issues like this are swept under the rug. I'm asking the media, do your homework. When people make a statement, follow it up. Because oftentimes you all are fed lies. And you take those lies hook, line, and secret and feed it to the people. That means that you should really look at what you're taking to the people. Because if a man was, if he took two people hostage and he assaulted those people, and there's weeks have passed by and there's no other mentioning of these people in the media, who were they? That's what I'm saying. You can't have justice without truth. And you can't have truth if you don't have responsible journalists, responsible community leaders who are willing to go and search the truth out. So I'm saying this, how much value do we place on this man's life? How much value do we place on his life? Or do we do like Mr. Turner said do? Forget about it. Just go home after man 107 years, a national treasure for our state. It's killed. Do we just go home, roll over, and forget about it? What type of example are we setting for our young people who are involved in conflict on a day-to-day -day basis and have to make a decision whether they're going to take somebody's life or not? And if we're in authority and we don't have the moral fortitude to do whatever we can do to preserve life, 
then we're no better than the thugs on the street who are toting guns and shooting folks for nothing. So I'm saying, let's do our research. Those questions still need to be answered. How much time was it between the time they shot the tear gas in the house and the time they rushed in and killed the man? Why didn't the tear gas take effect? If they're watching a man on the camera and he is no threat to nobody, what is the rush to run in on? As old as he is, really, what is the rush? It seems like to me you could have shot a beanbag at the man and took him out without taking his life. So I'm saying these are questions that all of us have to think about because it was Mr. Isidore on September the 7th. But tomorrow it might be your grandmother or your grandfather. So this is not an issue we can sit on the sideline for because this has been identified as one of the hot spots. So Mr. Hubank's fella need to go in there, put his, his Superman suit on, and prove something to somebody and a man lost his life. And if I did it or you did it, you would be locked up today. So is the badge a, a, a green light for the police to kill people? If that's the case, we need to know. Y'all could have called me. I talked to Alderman uh, Glenn Brown. He said, y'all could have called him. He would have got the man out without killing him. So I'm saying this is something that we're passionate about. Damn right we're passionate. We should be passionate about old folk being killed. By military trained people. When they call the military in, SWAT is military trained. So they didn't come to negotiate. If you got an elderly man who can't hardly hear and can't hardly see, something should have been done different. That's all I'm saying. If it was me, I would have I would have rather for something to be done different. Now, do the media have any questions? Because like I said, it's a two-way street. And we're not pulling no punches and hiding behind nothing like the police department or nobody else. Do you feel like the special prosecutor can offer any uh, answers that are uh, truthful answers? Because you mentioned you want the uh, Justice <coughs> Department to get involved. Do you feel like the special prosecutor is just a, another extension of Mr. Hunter's office? Or how do you feel about that? Well, one thing is for sure, when issues like this have happened around the country, particularly in the South dealing with black people, there's a track record of it being swept under the rug. And so, the reason why Mr. What was it that caused Mr. Kyle Hunter to say he didn't want to deal with the case in the first place? What did he see that he would tell the citizens of Pine Bluff that he don't want to damage his relationship with the police department? That means he saw something that the police department did that was wrong. Other than that, he could have came out and said they were justified. But he let you know in his own statement that he saw that they did wrong and he didn't have the courage to deal with it. Why? Because of political hey, reasons. Question. You, you say you're going on fact. How do you know that's a fact, what you just said? I know it's a fact because he's, he, he know? I know it's a fact because he stated it in the newspaper. That he knew that something? He stated it in the newspaper that when he looked at the case, he didn't want his, his, his relationship with the Pamela Police Department, the people that he has to work with, to be scarred. No, but I, I want to get this on camera. You stated that. I'm that asking, no, what did he this see? Is what you stated. You said he what stated. did he see? No, I'm asking. That you made him not want to deal with the case. Now you, you're blaming the media on all this stuff. So I'm asking a question. You asked me to ask questions. You stated that he had he saw something that would be bad. What did he see? My question is. No, no, my, question, my question. My question is. My question is this. My question is this. What did he see to make him? That's all I'm asking. Now you said you, you, you know he saw something. That's, that's all I'm asking. I'm saying that he saw something. What was it? He saw something that the police did wrong. Okay, okay. I thought if it's going to damage his relationship okay. with the police department, that's the only thing he could see. You, if if the police did. department is right, then that can't, him coming out and saying, well, they did everything by policy, that can't damage his relationship, right? But if he come out and say, look, they did something wrong, that can damage it. You don't know for a fact that he saw something. That's what I'm saying, that he saw something that made him not want to deal with the case. And that's why he said, he didn't, he didn't say it about the other cases, 
that been going on with young folks and young folks. He didn't say he didn't want to damage himself on that. But when it comes down to the police department, I don't want to hurt my relationship. That don't sound right to me. That I can deal with everybody else killing somebody, but when it comes down to the police, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Come on, that don't even make sense on the surface level. Because of a relationship, what happened, what's going to happen later on when one of these young people get killed by a police? Is it going to say, I don't want to damage my relationship, so I don't want to deal with it even though y'all done voted me in and y'all paying my bills? I don't want to deal with it when it comes down to checking the police or even the possibility of having to check the police or confront the police. I don't want to deal with it. Why did he throw the case away? Why did he give it to somebody else? Okay. Why did he feel like whatever he saw or him not wanting to deal with the case, him dealing with the case will possibly damage his relationship with the police department? So he letting you know. You know, some of his stuff ain't rocket science. He letting you know, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to damage my relationship. So evidently, why, why would he say that? I mean, come on, we ain't rocket scientists here. Why would he make a statement like that? Because he don't want to damage his relationship with the police. Simple as that. He said. So I'm saying, you know, we got to do our job. And I'm not putting off on the media, but I'm saying, I've been watching stuff for a long time. Sometimes I'm never. And I see what's going on in the media report something totally different. That's the truth. Happened right over there at that church when, when Stephanie Flower was running. And, and, and the media reported something else. And I was right there in the meeting. And heard what the woman said out of my mouth. I was standing right, right there beside her. So I'm saying now, uh, it's a two-way street. I understand y'all have a job to do. I'm not beating y'all up, but I'm saying, trace the truth down because these people need to know the truth, man. They deserve to know the truth. And then for, for him to be painted as a thug, all of this history and all of this stuff and you know, people saying, oh, basically, uh, he shot shot at the police and he deserved it. I mean, the other side of it is, he was in his room, not bothering nobody. Did you see the report I did for the Democrat? I'm not with the Pound Bluff commercial. I'm with the Democrat. No, sir, I haven't saw the report. We, we actually reported that he was, what well, you just said, He, I talked with his caregiver, uh, and she said that he had gone to his room, was praying, and that there were no hostages, or there were no, uh, there was no aggression or anything like that. And we did report that, so we, we did. I, I appreciate. It. I certainly, I, I certainly, I yeah, certainly that. appreciate yes, that. Yes, but sir. I'm saying, I if, either way, and I, I respect yes, they're challenging me, but either way, we got to challenge each other because people lie. They could be lying on this side. I met with the family twenty some of them, and they gave me a, a, a totally different story. Like I said, they said he went to his room to fast and pray until October the fourth. That wasn't reported in the media nowhere. But all this other negative stuff was reported about him. And it painted him in a real bad, in a real bad light. I didn't like that. I wish you'd read my, if you could read my articles. I, I will, I, really I will try to, I will try to look it up. But I, I hope I, I gave a fair account of that. I have, I have looked at the Pine Bluff commercials. See that, that's not. I looked at the Pine Bluff commercials, and that's what I read. I didn't get a chance to see your story. I got a chance to look at the Pine Bluff commercial, and that's I'd be what I read. To you my week. Stories, if you'd like. Please, I'll make sure that you have my email. Okay. But let's, you know, let's be fair dealing with him. Uh, if he had issues, okay, so be it. But does that justify what happened? And let's, let's stay on point in terms of dealing with the issue, man, because uh, nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves that. Yes, it's going to be communityactivism24 at gmail.com. Media activism 24 at gmail.com. You have something like this? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. No one has asked a question. No one has asked a question that was on my mind. So I really didn't want to be on camera, but I went ahead and asked it, and no one else asked it. So we were there in a service on Saturday for all of the folks that were going on, and you know, we heard the shots at the end and everything. And the next day, coming on Sunday to church. We didn't see any tape around here or anything. I want to know why did the police rush to clean up the crime scene? And you know, that's because why the state police didn't get involved. Exactly. Right. And they know policy and procedure about collection of evidence and chain of command and chain of evidence. They know all those rules and regulations and they knew that if they cleaned it up, the state police was not going to be able to do anything because 
the chain of evidence did not go through their hands. Everything was cleaned up. They were in here the next day, like Monday, and cleaning up the windows and keeping up. And I was just like, how are they doing that so fast? And it was very disturbing. Mr. Isdor used to live down the street from me when he was on 19th and Olive. And it was just very disturbing that they just cleaned this up so quickly. And, you know, when the state police called in, of course they couldn't do anything. The, the crime scene was gone. So I would like to know why they cleaned it up so quickly. Why they, you know, just move everything without having any other higher authority come in and look at it. As far as Kyle Hunter removing himself, anytime there's any appearance that it might be um, indiscretion 